me feeling like I'm academics. Can't Oh, Vlad TV versus Marlon Wayans. Oh, okay. It's something to Vlad TV, Marlon Wayans. So, by the way, chat, I'm going to be honest with you. Wait, did Elliot just recently interview? Like, damn, they got all types of shit. Okay. So, Marlon Wayans is beefing with Vlad. I talked to Vlad yesterday. I told him this is his fault. Um... Vlad had tweeted out, this is after being on an interview with a few people. I've seen it with Aries Spears, where he basically announced that, hey, a former guest of mine, and, you know, he had done an interview with Marlon Wayans, apparently was at a press junket for, like, a movie Marlon Wayans was having eons ago. And he said that he was trying to get Marlon Wayans back on the platform, except Marlon Wayans' representative told him that, yo, bro, you need to pay us $40,000, and we need a certain percentage of the back end, Okay. Uh, he spoke about it a couple times. Then Marlon Wayans snapped back at Vlad. And um, actually, l let me just go to Marlon Wayans, Vlad, and I seen him with the Erie Spears interview, okay? Now, by the way, the in this interview is coming up, but I had to convince Vlad which I don't like it's so it's kind of so surprising. I had to convince Vlad. Actually, let me do this before. I had to convince Vlad. And by the way, I, I gave this tutorial for all YouTubers, right? And if everybody wonder why I got all them cars sitting back there, every hoe is trying to sue me because they just trying to get the bag. Why is act just looking so goddamn up? Um, number one, I'm good at investments, but but not only that, like, hey, listen, when you're the best at what you do, you better be getting some coins, right? Uh, unless you're retarded. Um I, I, I'll say this. I, I had to convince Vlad that the Cat Williams, Shannon Sharp interview. Vlad was in denial that I said this interview made between five to ten million dollars. Hundred percent fact. For whatever reason, Vlad was like, no, it didn't. It didn't. Like, bro. Like, and I did quick math, like really quick math. Right. Uh, I, I'll do the quick math with y'all here. Uh, the main clip has 73 million. All right, let me just make sure you can see my mouse. Main clip has 73 million. Um, the ancillary clips have about 40 to 50 million. So it's about 120 million um, essentially for the whole video. Let me tell you how it works. Number one, on the lowest event, if you get a million views, it's about $4,000. If you're a mid partner, you're going to get around $8,000 to $9,000 per million views. If you're Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast is probably getting twenty five dollars to $30,000 per million views. So calculate the money he got. Here's the thing, on a conservative level, this guy just was on Fox Sport, blah, blah, blah. He got Club Shay Shay, who's partnered with the huge MCA. He's getting conservatively, let, let, let's just go with 10,000. 10, remember, it's a three-hour interview. Three-hour interview. We're not talking about a song. Three-hour interview. There's, there's probably dozens of ads in there, right, if you watch it fully. Obviously, many people don't watch it fully, but... The watch time on it, because, you know, this has been such a big thing culturally, got to be at least 30 minutes on average. So you're probably digesting, like, at least. Six to seven ads, at least, right? Minimum. OK, so let me do my math with y'all. So for that, every million is going to be about ten thousand dollars minimum. And I'm going low end just to show you how much money there is. So low end, 73 million views is going to be about $730,000 just for this main clip. That's a low end. I guarantee I will bet any money if Shannon Sharp showed the analytics for this video. Oh, actually, wait, wait. I thought it was a three-hour interview. Is it only 128? No, it's not. Let me see. Full interview. I thought it was three hours. Oh. Yeah, here it is. Three hours. Okay, okay, my bad. Shit, what the fuck was I clicking on before? Okay, okay. What the fuck was I clicking on? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm tripping. My bad. So three hours, right? Now, here's the thing. Remember I said it, it, it's about it's about 40 million clip views, 73 million, or let's say 70 million main views. So about 110, right? On average, it's going to be $10,000 per every million. So 110 
So 110 million views is going to be at least, and this is very conservative, is going to be one point, uh, was it one point one million dollars, right? So if every million is ten thousand, and there's a hundred and eleven or hundred and ten million views, it's at least one point one million view, uh, um, dollars. Okay. Now, then we got to think about sponsorships. We got to go at least half a million with that. So now we at one point seven. And these are very small numbers I'm given compared to the magnitude of this interview. Okay. Um, um, wait, how did I do the math? Okay. So, yeah. It, it, it's it, it's about, like, by the time, then, oh, here, here we go. Then you're going to say, how many people repurposed this? Because this is only on the Club Shay Shay page. How many other people reacted to it? A interview like this, not every interview, this is going to be what's called content ID. So now everybody who watches it, obviously certain reactors are not going to get their revenue stolen, but the majority of people who re-uploaded this and their revenue is getting taken. Shannon Sharp is going to get that. That's going to be another million dollars. So anytime you see a video on an original page, it's usually bootlegged the same amount on YouTube. What YouTube does, they'll take down some videos, but 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 for the most part on a big video, they'll re reroute the, the revenue. So now we are, we're at like 1.7, let's just call it 2, right? Because again, we're going low end. Two, there's going to be three million dollars. Now we're t we're at three million dollars just off completely monetizing on YouTube content ID, off the channel, random other stuff. We're also talking about maybe product placements and whatever else you had for that video that now has to. So now we're at three million dollars. How do I get to five, and how do I even say it's probably even closer to ten? Now when you get to Facebook, and this is monetization strategy, I should never tell most of y'all, but you know I just don't give a fuck. Eh, when you're at the top, you just, you, you, you try to help people out. If this makes $3 million on YouTube, you better goddamn right this made $2 million on Facebook. Yes, Facebook's a monetization strategy that every um, pronounced uh, um, creator would use. Um, they actually monetize better than YouTube, even though the, the views are slower and it's all based on algorithm. But this is a cultural interview. Everybody was looking at it. This was going to hit every algorithm no matter what. Okay, bet. So now we're at $3 million on YouTube. Add $2 million. That's all Facebook. Then we're going to Snapchat. Yeah, it works like that. Trust me, this made a million on Snapchat too. Facts. So now we're at six million. That's like, these are easy numbers when you have this type of interview. So again, my estimation is five to 10. So when Shannon Sharp, and I think Shannon Sharp has said, yo, I've made more than I ever made in an NFL season. I don't know how much I ever made in an NFL season, but it's definitely, this interview has got him at least $5 million factuals you get what i'm saying i don't know why and vlad's an og in this game vlad just severely down down press these numbers like no this is a five million dollar interview factuals just to let y'all know okay cool all right anyway uh we we're talking about that and um yeah you know he actually admitted like when you watch the interview he's gonna admit like act you know what you've made so much because i'm spelling everything out like Bro, I know we in YouTube and sometimes it's the boogeyman. People act like they don't want to tell what they make. Bro, I've been doing this shit for 15 years. Vlad been doing this shit for 20 years. Vlad knows the numbers. You know, v v Vlad is just not thinking it's it's exactly what it is because I don't even know why. But this is just huge. Anyway, cool. So, all right, we're here. We're here with it, right? So, you're going to see on the interview with Vlad, Vlad admits... Yeah, this is a multi-million dollar interview by 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 um by Shannon Sharp, and he probably gained between five to ten million. That's just what it is. Anyway, we eventually did get to the Marlon Wayne's situation, and I'm gonna tell you why I said the first thing because it all does matter, right? So when I first saw it, this was Vlad talking to Erie Spears, and they went over the fact that. I guess through negotiation, Marlon Wayans asked for $40,000 and 30% of the revenue from the interview he did with Vlad. Listen to this. Uh, we reached out to Marlon Wayans about doing an interview. And he had to speak to his uh, person who, uh, you know, coordinates this stuff. Do you know how much they asked for a Marlon Wayans interview? I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> 40000 plus 30% of all future revenue. <laughs> this is the part. 
where I'm going to show a lot of growth because once upon a time ago, I would have just like a chainsaw went and let my mouth run. And it probably puts me in positions that I shouldn't or don't want to be in. So I'm going to take this moment to grow as a human being and back out of this. Well, I'm not going to back out of it. So basically, and me and him would DM sometimes. I remember I told him his last stand up was great and everything else like that. And I basically hit him. I was like, my man, I'd rather you say that you not fuck with me. You just don't fuck with me rather than give me this stupid ass number like this. Because there's nobody on earth that will pay you 40000 for an interview, much less 30% on top of that. Give me one second. I'm going to go grab some liquor. This is probably my last liquor run because I'm going to give you all another hour and 20 that we probably going to be rapping. So my last liquor run. Um, listen to this. And I've listened to it already, so I'll be able to react when I come back. And he's like, oh, uh, y'all just work it out and everything. At one point, we even got on the phone, you know, because I was basically like, this is a fuck you number. Let me, right? let me ask this you This is a fuck you number. Let me ask you something. Yeah. Here's my question. Had you done it, do you honestly, in your gut and in your head, think that the juice would have been worth the squeeze? And before you answer that, let me say this. Before you answer, if you, if you like, you had somebody AI your voice, yeah. and it was a cartoon of Trump, yes. and it was somebody imitating Trump. Right. If they said to you 40000 to actually get Trump right after the shooting, so much so that when you interview him, he's got the patch on. Yeah. That juice is worth the squeeze, is it not? Yes. Okay. So if you did pay Marlon 40000 in your mind. Plus 30%. In your mind, in your gut, is that juice worth the squeeze? Absolutely now, not. Now, we could be wrong. Absolutely he could give not. you the, the interview of, of the millennium. Listen, but I had I'm a... just saying, do you really go, yo... This right here, Yo, I got, this listen, is some Barbara Walters shit. I, I had to break it down to him and say, look, if you look at your recent interviews, doing shows like I do, like The, the Breakfast Club, you get about 300,000 views. That's okay. a few thousand dollars in YouTube revenue. Okay. Mm, not necessarily. But anyway, I'll say this. I told Vlad this was his fault. So Vlad is one of the main platforms who introduced the fact that they pay for interviews. Before interviews was primarily seen as quid pro quo. And it was like, hey, I'm doing this interview, but you're going to promote my music. It was like it was almost an exchange. It wasn't like I'm doing you a favor by giving you free content. Right? Vlad, because he couldn't get some of the main guys, he would get some of the guys who had personalities, but wasn't in the most relevant stage of their career. Got to the point where, like, for example, with a Boosie, he pays Boosie from what I've heard really well. Not my business to tell y'all what I've heard. The reason why I said it's Vlad's fault that this happens is that, well, when you see the Cat Williams interview and you hear, and trust me, his agent and whatever have told probably him how much money that made. Now, granted, that Cat Williams interview is a one of one. We've never seen an interview get done like that. Okay, that, that that revenue I'm telling you, five to ten million, you're like you're you, the majority of creators are going to work five years to go get that. And I'm not talking about little niggas. I'm talking about established creators. Okay, to have a three hour video that people are watching 80 million times is crazy. The reason why I blame Vlad, though, is because. Marlon Wayans doesn't understand the business of what YouTube is. These days, the majority of these interviewers pay their interviewees. The reason why you see FYBJ Main pop up on these platforms, he's getting paid. The reason why you see Charleston White, the reason why you see Boosie, they're getting paid. And those guys might be cool with a flat fee. Maybe they're getting 5K, 10K. Some of these guys getting 25, sometimes even 35. Now you get Marlon Wayans that once he sees a business model, they start to look at interviews like movies. So now they're like, well, if I'm the guy who's the only person on camera who, yes, you're interviewing me, but my name and likeness has to sell this, I deserve for my star power this amount of money. Not only do I deserve that amount of money, I want back-end money. When I worked at Complex after Joe left, one thing I'll always give Joe credit for, Joe wanted a certain amount of money. I think it was a million dollars a year that he wanted. They weren't down to pay. He wanted equity in percentage on the show because there was a time that no matter what they would get a nike ad get two hundred thousand, 
And per the contract, all they had to do was give me and Joe a $5,000 bump. So the two guys who make the show, I get an extra $5,000 for that month. Joe gets an extra $5,000 for that month. They got $200,000. So they got one hundred and ninety dollars after they pay us. Thumbing through the check. Ain't life sweet. Oh, my God. So Joe was really big on we need percentage. Because you guys are paying us little to nothing. When we first signed on to Complex, we signed on for a once a week show. That what was we were getting supposed to get paid about, I think it was 10 or 15K for a once a week show. Joe being the guy who saw that the show was special. He said, Ack, this is, this is him to me. Ack, yo, I think we can fuck them all up. Fuck the Breakfast Club, fuck everybody. This is gonna be the best show ever. Are you down? I'm like, you know me, I'm a work hard. Let's get it. He said, Ack, we're going to have to do the show every day to really do what we got to do. I said, every day? He said, every day, Ack. Let's do it. No more questions. We didn't go back to them and say, okay, since we're doing it every day, remember they're paying us like 15K. We didn't, we didn't go back to them and say, we need five times because it was a once a week show. So now what does Complex have? Complex has a show that we're giving them five times the amount of work when they only intended and asked for one day. Ain't that sweet? Then in the contract it said, if we get an ad, no matter how much the ad is, we only got to pay y'all 5,000 more. This show is on fire because we're doing it every day. We're disrupting shit. Me and Joe getting at it. He's in my face. I'm spazzing out. Shit is great. Me and Joe, the greatest hip-hop show, I believe, still of all time. I agree. The ads start coming in. Okay. What's up with that? That type of ad. Nah, nah, you good. Yo, your next paycheck, just invoice for like, 5,000 more. I'm kind of green. I'm like, all right, whatever, fuck it. Like, I'm making so much money off YouTube. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about that little 20K they're giving. Who cares? All right. Joe is looking at like, nah, this shit don't make no sense. <laughs> Joe's, Joe's ass, and let me tell you this. I, I, Joe, I, I, I ain't trying to expose your secret now. You know what Joe does? Me and Joe used to walk outside every time and wait for our cars. I noticed Joe started hanging out with the employees. Start befriending them. I'm like, is Joe trying to kick game? But I know he got a girl. Now, Joe ain't trying to kick no game. What are you doing in there? Joe there just keeps smoozing and just talking and talking and talking. Talking. Like, he's just getting friends with everybody. I'm like, damn. I'm like, this is why he's good. He's a, he's a people person. Joe wasn't trying to become friends. Joe was trying to get to the fucking information. That nigga found out how much the deals were coming in for. So while we were leaving with the 10K, they were getting 190 Man, oh man, the moment Joe realized that bitch. And by the way, I'm, I'm being facetious with like like that number of like a Nike deal for 200K. I'm not saying that's a real thing, but I'm just telling you what was. We were definitely only getting 5K no matter what. But they were signing deals that were hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's a fact. The moment that shit happened, I always told people the show ended. Because Joe ain't have another good day at that building. Joe couldn't stomach. It was like he was signed to Def Jam again, nigga. He couldn't stomach that we were working and these niggas was making hundreds of thousands off the back of our... Yo, P and... Well, not P, but, but QC was trying to jump the nigga. Yo, I'm getting embarrassed at, at, in L.A., other niggas is saying, yo, if we come to Complex and see Ack, we smacking them. Complex is thumbing through the check. <laughs> when Joe realized that, he said, oh, we fucked up. We need percentage on the back end. Because if we were both getting, let's say it was fair, 15%, 20% each. Y'all get 60, but I get 20, you get 20. If it was two hundred thousand dollars, we'd have got forty thousand each for that deal. They would have kept one twenty, but instead we got ten thousand. They kept one ninety. Now, that was learning the game of you know a show, and and that happens when you have a show. I know it's a show on YouTube, but that's learning the game right there, right? I learned it myself when Joe left. One thing I'll say about Joe, and this was I guess the story I was trying to say before, if I you know 
tangent like I usually do. Joe says, Ack, I'm not coming back to Complex. I'm in my feelings. I'm hurt because I'm like, oh, we got the best show ever. But he said, Ack, fuck them up. And what he said by that was, they don't got nothing else but you, nigga. And I negotiated a really good deal with them, which was a percentage deal. And it was, hey, listen, I want a percentage of the show. And that happens. Like, if you go see any of these shows, if it's the Wendy Williams show, I guarantee on the back end, not only was she getting a salary, she was getting a revenue or a percentage on the ads or a percentage on the profit. That's just kind of how it goes. Now, why did I say that? Because that might have seemed like a waste of time. I said that because um, that was my experience working in a place where there is... You know, they were doing a digital show, but they were trying to treat it like it was a TV show. And eventually we went to Fuse, right? And, and there was a deal that came to Fuse. And I remember I was like, I remember when they told us, yo, I know we're on YouTube, but yo, we're about to put segments of the show on Fuse. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm going on TV. And, and Joe was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Joe was on Love and Hip Hop that time. Joe, Joe said to them, he said, <laughs> he said, I didn't sign my TV rights. And then I looked over it, and Joe was explaining, oh, we need some more money for that. And I was like, what? <laughs> Green on me. That's why I was, me and Joe, we were always going to have, like, a great relationship. I love Joe. Like, you know what I mean? Like, y'all could never get me to beef with Joe, ever in your life. Uh, because he, he taught me a lot of things. And, and I've always said I would never go about it the way he went about it, but it, almost everything he said was goddamn true. And, um... Yeah. So let's get to here. Marlon Wayans, you see, that was a green act, right? I'm comparing myself to the Charleston White in them. Green. Marlon Wayans has been in the TV sitcom business for a long time. What he asks Vlad for is how they talk in that business. Okay, we want this up front, we want percentage on the back end. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, we want this credit. We want to be an EP. That's how they speak in that realm. What's happened recently is that these entertainers are hearing Vlad and, and others of the like advertise that they're spending a good amount of money to get guests. It's a biz. It's not an interview that's a quid pro quo anymore in terms of you're promoting your show or your album. So that's why I told Vlad, I said, Vlad, this is your fault. He wasn't shitting on your platform by asking for 40K and 30 and 30%. He was treating you as your platform is now elevated to be. When you now start giving out hefty sums of appearance fees and they now look at your show as a sitcom, like he's worked in the business for 20 plus years, Marlon Wayans is going to talk to you with that lingo. So I don't think he's disrespecting you. He's just thinking, just like how I broke down how much money the Cat Williams thing made. They're thinking to, to, to what's the name like, bruh? I don't think they think they're going to make as much money, but they're thinking this business of YouTube interviews has scale that way. Now, let me say this, because I know Say Cheese, do, they'll do some stuff like that. I don't know if Adam does all the time, but I know he does certain stuff. Me, I'm kind of, I'm really against it. Like, you know, have I ever paid somebody uh, um, for an appearance fee? Yes. But these, honestly, if it ain't free, I'm good. You know why? I make too much just running my own fucking mouth. I just can't pay another nigga just to sit there. You know what I mean? I'm good. You know what I mean? It's like, at this point, I look at it as an equal trade. Nigga, you sitting with me and I'm sitting with you. If it ain't that equal, please fuck off that I could talk about you by myself. So I'm not, that's not my monetization strategy at all. But where YouTube is going and this pay for play system in YouTube interviews, what was asked of Vlad is not disrespect, it's what people should start to expect as this gets bigger. I could see Charleston White, who, by the way, Charleston White will take 15,000 and do a new channel with 800 subscribers, give you the interview of your lifetime. That shit hits a million. 
Now you have 40,000 subscribers and now you have a channel that could you could use his interview to attract other clients that you don't have to pay or pay significantly less. Yes, he might say, I need more than 15,000 because I just gave you a career. I need percentage on that interview forever in perpetuity. I understand. Now, granted, the way everybody started with this pay for interview shit was not with this intended, but when you get into this, this business does scale up. So I don't think that Marlon Wayne's disrespected Vlad at all. Anyway. There's not a person on earth that will pay you this. In fact, my last Breakfast Club interview that I did got more than twice as many views as his. And when I talked to him, he's like, listen, uh, I was involved in this. I'm like, listen, you have people speak on your behalf. In fact, before we went forward with this negotiation, I said, is this person representing you? And you said, yes. I said, this would be the equivalent, Marlon, of me hitting you up and saying, hey, I've got a comedy show. I want you to do a one hour set. I'll pay you $100. And I want a piece of your future shows as well. <laughs> listen, man, after the Shannon Sharp interview with Cat oh. Williams, if Cat were to say to people, right. I want... What you just said? Yes. 40,000? Yeah. 30%. Cat Williams is 40,000. Marlon but, but, Wayans but, but, is not but, Cat but, Williams. But the See, this is the danger of having like an interview platform where you're so reliant on guests. You're going to have these conversations. Anyway, here's the point. And let me get to uh, this Vlad TV and Marlon Wayans. Again, remember, Marlon is a, Marlon's a guy who's just worked in, in, in a huge way through movies, sitcoms, and he's been in the industry. So for him, when Vlad basically say, you're disrespecting me, Marlon doesn't see it as that. You know why Marlon's saying 40,000? Because I even said on Vlad, I said, well, Vlad, he would have probably had a different opinion about why you wouldn't give him that if you explained to him what YouTube revenue was. Like, truth be told, and Vlad is right here, for Vlad to give somebody $40,000 without a motherfucking doubt that person should be pulling a few million of views. Like, it, it, Vlad is 100% going to lose if that person doesn't pull millions of views. Can Marlon Wayans pull millions of views on an interview unless he's about to tell, like, some exclusive story or something like that or he just went through some trauma and he's about to just speak for the first time? Probably not. And and if and if, if Vlad explained, I told Vlad, I said, bro, you should have said, explain to him how YouTube works, bro. Just tell him, like, yeah, bro. On the on the best events, maybe a million views is ten thousand dollars, but really it's about like five thousand. So a million views, five thousand bucks. I I would have to get eight eight million views just to break even off your interview. I would have to get eight million views, and then thirty percent of future revenue. Like bro, like it, pretty much we we'd be waiting years to break even. And, and that's just not what we're doing. And I guarantee, maybe we'll negotiate it, whatever. Anyway. Um, okay. Uh, uh, hold on. And um, what I think that Marlon Wayne's opinion is, and I could be wrong, is I think that Marlon Wayne looks at this and says, well, here's the thing, Vlad. Here's the thing. You're a white guy who needs me you needs you need the culture for validity and also for views so when you get and by the way Marlon Wayans is royalty he's royalty in terms of black excellence in the industry like if if you look back at what his family has done they are ingrained in TV film they're ingrained in this industry, and I think he, I think he probably was adding, yo, that's that nigga tax. You ever heard of a phantom tax? That's a nigga tax. Yo, bro, Vlad, you need me, brother. So because I got the Wayne's name, because I'm me, yeah, maybe I don't get eight million views, but hey, you might parlay using my interview to go get somebody, hey, eight, uh, um, um, forty thousand dollars. And I told Vlad, I said that is, there's a white man tax for you for certain people. Because they feel like, because especially you're not on camera, you're using their face to sell the product. You get what I'm saying? When they feel your face is off camera, and they feel like you're using them and their culture equity, yeah, I don't think he could get no 8 million. I don't think he could get no 8 million views. But he's like, 
nah, you need me. So that's that white man tax. You get what I'm saying? Put it like this. Uh, what's the name? Polo G. Polo G had the whole argument with Vlad. I was trying to get them to hopefully like, you know, kind of maybe either squash it or maybe could go on his platform. It appears that Polo G wouldn't even like, not saying Vlad was offering. I'm not saying he was offering at all. But Polo G wouldn't take money to go on Vlad's platform. He hits me up and said, Ack, yo, I'm coming through. I'll, let's sit down. Free, of course. Did you see what I'm saying? So, so I guess I was trying to tell Vlad, like, bro, they're hitting you with the white man tax. That's just the reality of it. They're hitting you with the white man tax. And even though I do believe your platform is cultural and hip hop, they're still looking at, or some people still look at you as, yo, you need us to per, uh, um, to perpetuate or to to kind of get more into culture, and that's why they're hitting you with the tax, brother. I don't know if that that matters. Um, but anyway. I, I I I told Vlad that him getting asked that asked for that money from uh, Marlon Wayans it wasn't disrespect, but it's it's a result of the environment he's created. When Boosie says he's making a living, and you got to realize, also people don't understand YouTube algorithms and what works. Marlon Wayans is an infinitely bigger superstar than Charleston White. But a Charleston White interview will get 10 times the views as Marlon Wayne's. Do you get what I'm saying? Marlon Wayne's isn't thinking about that, nor is his reps. They're saying, this is Marlon Wayne's. What are you talking about? So if Charleston White you could get for 10K or 15K, you think he's going to be like, oh, Charleston will get more views than me, so just give me like three. No! It's like, nigga, I'm Marlon Wayne's. I'm in the movies. Fuck out of here. So that's what I was trying to tell him. I'm like, yo, you're now dealing with industry people and they're not going to have their price at, um, lowered or, or basically curtailed to your industry because they don't even understand YouTube like that. They don't understand that. Also, I haven't seen a channel that has done uh, um, proper back end. I haven't seen any personal YouTube channel where independent creator has an accountant calculating back end that they could share revenue. No, it's not happening. Okay. All right. Um, from what I got from Vlad, it looks like you know maybe they'll get to a, a better a better place, and um, you know that would be good whenever that happens, right? Okay. All right. Give me some more topic, people. Give me some more topic. Yo, we've been rocking today, man. Seven hours. I feel like every every time I don't ooh I'm spilling spilling sorry I feel like every time I don't stream for a while I gotta give y'all like eight hours we're at seven hours and and eighteen minutes what y'all say let's get to eight should I get off now or should let's get to eight what's what's popping somebody say YG topic Somebody said W full shift. <laughs> Who's ex exploiting Gekum on TikTok? Who's that? Who's Carrie LOL? I don't know who that is. I ain't gonna lie, I fuck with y'all so much. Because uh, <laughs> y'all never want me to get off stream. It was, it was, you know, I appreciate that. Okay, cool. All right. Um, Let's 